It's been a while. <clears throat> Part of the reason it's been so long is because about three and a half weeks ago, I began manifesting the symptoms of COVID. Um, <clears throat> so, being as it's very present in my life at this moment, I want to talk about illness in general. Um, and but primarily about self-healing and different techniques that I use, uh, different um, uses of initiation into hermetics that I employ in my own self-healing. And self-healing has been an important part of my life for quite a number of years. Um, so I'm, I'm very proficient at it very good at it, very adept at it. And this carries over to healing work with others. Uh, not all just self-healing, but that's most important at the moment because of dealing with COVID, <clears throat> which has not been a very pleasant experience. Now, about three and a half weeks ago, it was on a Friday, I woke up just feeling like shit. <laughs> um, I had had a very tumultuous night's sleep. Now, I attributed it to, at the time. I thought it was because of the solar flares that were happening. They were hitting the earth that Thursday night and throughout Friday. I just attributed it to that because I'm fairly sensitive to massive solar flares. Um, probably because of all the work that I do with crystals. At any rate, <clears throat> as the day progressed, I realized it was not just solar flares. And in fact, I was feeling um, like I was running a fever. That feeling you get in your head where everything's just, there's a slight lag <laughs> in reality. Uh, the world around you as you move your head, that disconnection. But I wasn't running a temperature. Now, running a temperature is one of the most healing things that a body does. It's its effort, its initial effort to destroy whatever organism has invaded. So, Running a temperature is a good thing in the healing process, and sweating is really the goal. Um, it rids you of all kinds of toxins and um, destroys any sort of virus. So I used the fire element uh, to build up a fever, and very quickly uh, rose from my 98.2... Fahrenheit, uh, normal temperature, to 200, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> 102 degrees temperature, which is a good temperature, and eventually I began to sweat and really process the virus that was in my body. I didn't know at this point that it was COVID, specifically. Um, <clears throat> and by the time I was going to bed, I... Um, uh, was still working with fever, sweating off and on, and then that night I sweat profusely. I woke up feeling a fair amount better the next day. Um, so I went through a few days of feeling feverish and occasionally running a temperature, not quite 102 anymore, 101, 100, that kind of thing. Sort of a low, medium grade temperature and sweating off and on. But I was beginning to feel better. And then one day, I think it was the following Tuesday, um, I woke up feeling pretty good, but then I noticed, I, I, I felt this congestion happening in my lungs. 
and it would turn into an immediate deep cough. Uh, but it was an active cough. It was a productive cough. Well, there was some kind of people freaking out around me, you know, really worried that I had COVID and we needed to deal with it. And so I got a hold of my doctor and got in for a COVID test that day, that afternoon. Um, and the congestion continued. It didn't get any worse. It was sort of background. It wasn't overbearing. I didn't feel, uh, I didn't have trouble breathing at all. I didn't feel a lack of oxygen. Um, but we took the COVID test and the next day we got the results and it was positive. Which sort of made sense at that point. There's been COVID around in my little town. Um, and, uh, so his, uh, solution, um, was to take Paxlovid, which is here in America, at least the treatment offered for us poor folk, uh, who have COVID, um, especially a person of my age. I'm 64, so I'm in that age group where everybody freaks out. So, uh, we went to the drugstore and got the medication. I started taking it that evening. So, up to that point, when I started taking Paxlovid, I was feeling better. You know, I, I felt like I had control over what was happening in my lungs. Um, I felt like I could make headway in self-healing with what was happening in my lungs. Um, but Paxlovid, oh my lord, that, that was a really awful experience. For five days, twice a day, I had to take these three pills that are uh, uh, an, actually an AIDS medication called Ritonavir with uh, another medication that makes it even more powerful. So this is uh, an antiretroviral protease inhibitor. Something not designed at all for, you know, a, a virus um, at any rate. Um, so for the next five, uh, six days, I was just suffering constantly from the effects of this Paxlovid. Now, it doesn't affect everybody this way, but it, it certainly affected me. It sort of felt like it was drilling a hole in my stomach. Um, my ability to eat was greatly <laughs> inhibited. Um, yeah, it was the medic, <laughs> the cure, <laughs> was worse than the disease, as it so often is. Um, but I took it for the five days, and at the end of the five days, plus about a day, day and a half of recovering from the effects of the Paxlovid, I was feeling good. You know, feeling so much better. I was very weak because I lost so much weight from, you know, the disruption in my digestive system. Um, so, it's been days, a week or so, of trying to gain back my strength, actually a little over a week at this point, of trying to gain back my strength, um, and here I am, I'm pretty much better, I still have some congestion in my lungs, but it's still, you know, stuff that I can grab onto when I cough and I can clear my lungs. My breathing isn't inhibited, etc. Um, there are certain neurological effects of COVID. Um, uh, oh, really hard to describe it. One effect 
of having COVID is the ringing in my ears has changed. It's simplified and become more right ear dominated. And that doesn't seem to be changing yet. Um, a lot of the other neurological effects um, I'm working my way through and uh, recovering from. Let's put it that way. And it's, boy, dealing with COVID has been weird. It's to me, this feels like a human made disease. It has all the uh, effects that I associate with human made diseases. Um, it has neurological effects. Um, so it somehow crosses that blood brain barrier. Um, Yeah, um, at any rate, that's really irrelevant because here it is, you know, we have it now. It's affecting us. It's, it's one of those diseases that is karmic personally and societally, socially. Um, it was in my personal karma to uh, be ill at this moment with this particular disease, but it's also in the collective karma. So that complicates things a little bit in terms of self-healing. Um, something that is karmic uh, has a different sort of persistence than something that is not karmic. Um, especially something that is socially karmic, that is collectively karmic. Um, yeah, it's different than just the, the um, casual cold that you might catch uh, riding on the subway. Um, <clears throat> well, that has some karmic, personally karmic aspects to it, usually. So, that's my recent experience with COVID. Now, throughout this process, I've been working at self-healing constantly while dealing with the disease. But before I get into self-healing, I need to preface a little bit and talk about being sick, um, illness, a little bit more generally at first specifically about the sorts of reactions that we have to illness and the role that they play and our attitude plays in self-healing. Now I'll break this down into the elements, the four elements. Um, with the fire, a very common response to being ill is anger. Oh, damn it. This is happening at just the wrong moment. It's terribly inconvenient. You know, F the universe if I have to be sick right now. It has mostly, anger mostly focuses around time. <laughs> But it, at its root, it is a response that rebels against what is, that uh, has difficulty accepting the, whatever the universe presents to us. And we, we just don't have that kind of control. A large part of the anger response is about our need to be in control at all moments. Uh, and <laughs> that's just impossible. The universe is in control. We have some control, but we don't have total control. So we need to accept that in order to heal. We need to move beyond 
feelings of anger at the universe, at the people that created this disease, at the uh, happenstance, you know. We need to just let go of that anger and accept that this is what the reality is at the moment. We have to accept illness whenever it touches us, okay? Now with the air, <clears throat> with the air, there is guilt, blame. Oh, how could I let this happen? How could I let myself get so run down that I got sick? Oh, man. And, you know, it's just so inconvenient to everybody around me. It places this burden on others around me. Oh, man. I, but I've got all these things I need to do. And I have to, uh, I have to flake out on all these things, all these people that depend on me. Blah, 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 blah. There's nobody to blame in illness. Illness is not about responsibility. Uh, about someone's responsibility. Someone is not responsible for me being ill. Let me put it that way. I'm not responsible for it. I'm not to blame for it. It's other people are not to blame for it. It again just is. So we have to let go of all the little blamings that that happen. All that feeling of guilt, of personal responsibility for being sick. We have to let go of it if we want to heal. We can't heal in the presence of blame. F to f blame, to blame on ourselves or on other people. Other circumstances. It just simply is, and we have to accept that. It always devolves into acceptance. That's the basis of self-healing, is acceptance. Now at the water, there's fear. Oh my God, I'm going to die. This is only going to get worse and worse and worse. I'm going to be in the hospital, hooked up to different machines, on the verge of death, etc., etc. And like all fears, it's a load of hooey. <laughs> you know, uh, thinking these ways makes you physically worse. It increases your symptomology. That's just basic mind-body stuff. You think yourself into feeling worse by amplifying every little uh, phenomena that occurs in association with the illness. We amplify them. We make them more important, more significant, and we're afraid. <coughs> we can work our way into this paranoid state that guarantee you only makes things worse. <laughs> we're feeding, we're feeding these fantasy symptoms. And, well, we make ourselves sicker in that way. So we've got to let go with fear and accept what is actually happening for what it is, 
you know, this little tiny thing as opposed to this big monumental thing. <clears throat> okay? We have to let go of the fear in order to heal and accept things as they are, not as we fear them to be. Okay? Because it's only when we really honor what's happening can we heal it. Do we have any power with it? This is what gives us power with it by accepting it as it is. Now, <coughs> the earth is the, oh, poor me. Oh, I'm suffering so much. You have to stop everything. The world has to stop and take care of me. It's that reaction that, oh, I call it the oh, poor me reaction. Now, the root of this is a very natural, normal, human need to feel cared for, to feel that somebody gives a shit that we feel horrible and don't want us to feel horrible, that someone cares for us. And that's normal. That's natural. But there's ways to meet that need that are not manipulative. And that's what the oh poor me is. It's purely trying to get help from the universe by manipulating it into caring for me. And that's a negative way, you know, of going about fulfilling that need. That's an honest, pure need that you need to recognize for what it is and accept it for what it is and go about meeting it honestly. Say to somebody, hey, you know, I need your help. I need your care. You know, I need you to... Uh, to love me, to look out for me, to have a thought for me. So that's a matter of reaching out and honestly stating your need. And you, you can't manipulate your way into self-healing. <laughs> self-healing has to be honest and factual and just the, the bare naked truth. <clears throat> you have to reach that point of acceptance. Acceptance is the key to self-healing. Okay, so that brings me to the techniques that I use in self-healing and the techniques that are available uh, for self-healing in the Barden lineage, shall we say. The first thing that I use, my go-to uh, healing substance, is the Catholic Brilliance. Now, at times that I am ill, it can be difficult for me to generate the Catholic Brilliance. But fortunately, I live with a couple of radi well, several radiators that generate continuously um, uh, the Catholic brilliance for me to use. So, first thing I do with the Catholic brilliance is I draw it into my body and I spread it evenly throughout my body. Now, the Catholic brilliance, the one of the most healing things that the Catholic Brilliant does is it effectively kills any foreign living being that has invaded my body. A virus, a bacteria, a fungus, these sorts of things. 
it will kill. What it does is it essentially liberates the spirit of that thing from its physical substance, which is effectively killing something. It no, it moves the spirit that inhabits that physical being on to its next incarnation, if you will. It liberates it from the binding to physical substance. So, the Catholic brilliance is essentially an antiviral, an antibacterial, an antifungal, um, and works very specifically on those beings, those life forms. Um, <clears throat> so, I spread the Catholic brilliance throughout my body, and if there is a specific place in my body that there is an infection of either, you know, any kind, bacterial, viral, or fungal, I will focus the catheteric brilliance in that place. Now, with COVID, it was very interesting. With COVID, at first, the only place that I could isolate the COVID uh, itself, the virus, was in my bloodstream. It hadn't apparently at that point, at the very beginning, taken up residence anywhere, anywhere specific. Um, so, I focused the Catholic brilliance in my bloodstream. That was the very first thing I did. Eventually, I realized that it had taken up residence in my lungs and in my brain. So, then I focused the, the Catholic brilliance in those places. Um, <clears throat> now, I, uh, I attribute the Catholic brilliance to the major portion of my healing thus far. Um, in my body in general, in, in my brain, and now in my lungs. Uh, it's clearing out my lungs. The lungs seem to be the most lingering part of this disease for me, which is natural for me. Um, <clears throat> so, working with the Catholic Brilliance. So that's primarily the function of the Catholic Brilliance for me is either antiviral, antibacterial, or antifungal. Um, then, I use the Adonai light. Now, <clears throat> The Adonai light is uh, it's not antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. It heals the uh, organs, it heals the body of the effects of the virus, bacteria, and fungus. In other words, it repairs. It repairs damage that has been done. It repairs lung tissue. It reconnects things in the brain. It, it, it purifies and enhances the blood throughout the body. Um, so, with the Adonai light, I collect it in my whole body, and then specifically in my lungs, I'll focus it into my lungs at times, into my brain at times, throughout the blood flow in my body at times. Other times I'll just collect it around me and let it do, let my body take from it whatever it needs, you know, separate from my own interventions. Um, and the Adonai light is the most pleasantly healing um, light that I use. More pleasant than the Catholic brilliance. More general than the Catholic brilliance. It mends. It mends damage that has been done. Whereas the Catholic brilliance really addresses um, the cause of that damage. <clears throat> 
Then, next up will be the vital energy. Filling, I, I, it's, it's so easy for me to just instantly fill my body with the vital energy. And this gives my immune system, such as it is, the, you know, an increase, a boost in power and boost in energy. And it gives my whole body, every part of my body, a boost of energy. And like, as I go to sleep at night, uh, during this period of self-healing, I would fill my body with the vital energy and take it through the night with me. And really, the nighttime is the time when the body does most of its healing during sleep. So this, this just accentuates that healing process during sleep. <clears throat> then, uh, throughout the process, uh, I've used primarily the fire element, well, fire, water, and air elements, specific, um, <clears throat> specifically, um, in very specific ways throughout the process. The first was the fire element, when I needed it to raise my temperature to create a fever and sweating. And that's very easy to do. You simply accum dynamically accumulate the fire element in your body until you achieve the, uh, the temperature you want, until you achieve a true fever, and then you release the fire element. And that was really all that I needed to do was to once raise that up to 102, 102.2, and leave it there. You know, let go of my control over my temperature. And that broke me out into sweating and uh, fe temperature fevering uh, as long as I needed that. Uh, my body needed that to uh, keep going, you know. It, it my the body knows, body knows when it needs to sweat, when it needs to pr try to fight an infection with heat, and sometimes all it takes is a little match, you know, a little something to get the fire going, and that's what I did with the fire element. I used the water element during Paxlovid in my gut. It was really the only thing that would calm this pain, this presence in my gut. Okay? And I used the air element frequently in uh, opening my lungs. You know, uh, making sure that, you know, I get enough oxygen. So just opening and loosening what's happening in my lungs. <clears throat> now, I also, um, several times, uh, many times, I've uh, done the four element balancing of the body, where you draw the earth element into the leg region. You draw the water element into the abdominal region, air element in the chest region, and fire element in the head region. And you maintain this um, dynamic accumulation of each of the four elements in their specific regions. This is very balancing, really brings the whole body back towards, at least, a state of balance, a state of elemental equilibrium physically, astrally, and mentally. Especially when you combine this with the self-healing Archaeus, which I'll get to in a minute. So, I do that frequently, and that is, well, balancing, you know, equilibrating, 
um, and promotes health at all levels and integrates the body systems by the elements and the flow of the elements from one state into another. Okay. <clears throat> Then I, I do, I've done it a couple of times, a fluidic balancing. Primarily with the magnetic fluid in the uh, water and earth regions of the body and the electric fluid in the air and fire regions of the body. This is a primary um, fluidic uh, balancing. Then I will take those fluids out into my hands, electric fluid right hand, magnetic fluid left hand for me. Um, you know, sort of divide them out uh, in this other um, balancing of the body, the right-left division. Okay, so working with the fluids in that way is also Balancing, the balancing here is mostly mental, astro-mental, mostly mental with the fluids. <clears throat> and then uh, is the archaeus, the separation of the bodies out into four parts. <clears throat> and the separation and resting along with wandering, a little bit of wandering. Okay, what I do is I separate out my astrophysical, um, excuse me, my astro-mental body, separate it out of my physical body. So I'm standing in front of my physical body in my astro-mental body. I feel the astral energetic and my breathing that ties me together. Then I, I will wander, astral wander, away from my physical body to some degree. It can be just sitting down right next to my physical body. It can be going into the next room with my astromental body. So there's a little bit more of a separation. Often I will come into the living room uh, from the bedroom and be sitting right here in this chair, astromentally. Okay? Now, I separate my temporal mental body from my astral body, which means I am separating out the air and fire regions of my mental body and sitting next to my astral body. So my astral body is now empty, completely empty. It's separate from the physical body and completely empty of the mental body. Not completely, there's always that cord of connection, but it is relatively empty. Okay? And so I'm sitting my mental body, the, the body that I wander with, is sitting next to my empty astral body. Now, I might wander away with my mental body, further away, or just sit there next to my astral body. Next, I separate the fire region of my mental body from the air region. Now, f for me, this is a, just simply a, a rising up to my greater self. And this is my fire region of the mental body off on its own. The air region is sitting there empty, unenlivened, and my fire region is with my greater self or with the I. Okay? So, 
I have separated myself out to the very core of my awareness. So I have four separate aspects of myself. And then I reunite with the air region of my mental body, looking at the astral body that's sitting in the chair, and then I reunite my mental body with my astral body. I feel the astral energetic and my breathing joins me with my astral form. Then I go back to where my physical body is, hold my breath and then back in my physical body. Now, doing that process healing at a very fundamental level. Well, it heals re into okay. <laughs> it rests each of the four aspects of our awareness, the physical aspect of the mental body, the physical body itself is relaxing in ways that it does not ordinarily relax. The astral body is relaxing in ways that it may never have relaxed before. The isolation of the astral body on its own um, is unique. Um, as far as I know, it is unique in hermetic practices. The isolation of the air region of the mental body is also unique. The air region without the fire involved, I know of no other technique that does that. The isolation of the fire region is not unique, but still it is rare in one's experience. So, each time we separate the body, we purify it by separating the rest of the bodies. So we have separated out the most pure part of our awareness and isolated ourselves for a time. And then we take that pure part back into the air region, which has been purified by it's being left alone. You know? We bring it back into the air region. And then we reunite with the astral body, which has been purified again by being left alone. It returns to its most natural state. That is what the healing for the astral body is. Return to its natural state without this mental involvement. And then we have this purified astral mental body, which we then, we enter back into the physical body, which likewise has returned to a more natural state by the absence of the astral mental body, we return to the physical body with this purified astral mental body. And that's probably the most healing exercise that I know of. Um, we can go still further, and for example, once we, ice, we have uh, removed the astral mental body and sitting in the chair, for example, we can do the four elemental zones of the astral body and have the astral mental body, you know, elementally equilibrated in that way. And we can do the same with the fire and air regions of the mental body. We can at that point fill each region with the elements. We fill the physical body with the earth element. Fill the astral body, the, you know, the empty astral body with the water element. 
fill the air region with the air element, fire region with the fire element, etc. Um, so there's many adaptations you can make to that, but the separation of the bodies, the resting of them, and then the reintegration. This is salve et coagula. This is a very, very healing exercise. So, those are the basic techniques that I have used in my process of self-healing. I hope that uh, inspires you uh, to do your own work with self-healing. Initiation into Hermetics, the um, magic of yod heh vav the uh, um, um, the self-healing Archaeus, uh, the Book of Ares, all of these offer very powerful techniques to be used in self-healing that can also be applied to other people. So that's it for me for this month. <laughs> Uh, currently, I am working on uh, the beginnings, the prototype for a new series of uh, radiators. And I have just received a shipment of crystals from Brazil, so there may be some new protectors in the offing. We'll have to see. So, that's it for me. Bye-bye.